He's drawn. He's drawn to this rabbi. But should he leave everything? I mean, this is a big thing. I mean, even most of us, if the Lord just said, he sees us on the job and says, okay, follow me. If we just saw a guy do that to us, we wouldn't go. I mean, how many of us would just, that moment, unless we, now we know better, if we knew it was him. But for him to see this rabbi say, all right, forget everything else, put it aside, follow me, it's it, over, follow me. He doesn't have much time to make the decision. And sometimes the problem is we have too much time, and so we never make it. He didn't have enough time. We have to treat our relationship with God as if it's the last moments, you know? And therefore, you do it. Whatever you would do, do it now, because you don't know. You don't have tomorrow guaranteed. Your heart stops. He rose up and followed him. It's amazing. They must have all, they were amazed that he called him, and they were amazed that he said yes. I mean, it's one thing. I mean, a student, rabbi. Rabbis had students, but a tax collector? That's like as low as a prostitute. But then again, undoubtedly he had prostitutes. We don't know if Mary Magdalene was or not. But the fact is, these are people who were touched by the grace of God and left it all behind. Here is the male equivalent of that, is the tax collector. It's not exactly like the IRS. The IRS is not popular by a long shot, but that's not what this is. This is much lower than that, if you say lower. I didn't say that. It was on the tape. I didn't say that lower. I meant it in a nice way. And so, you know, his friends, the other disciples, are probably saying, what are you? We don't want him. He's not holy. He's not, he's not like us. His old friends would say, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going with him? This could threaten everything. To have a tax collector would put him at risk. Messiah to be accused of siding with the Romans. Profound event. It's profound because it's recorded both in Mark's Gospel and in Luke's Gospel and in Matthew's Gospel. The tax collector, the underworld figure, this is underworld, becomes a disciple, a Talmudian. A holy disciple shows you anyone can be. It's not what you're worthy about. It's about the fact that he accepts. You know, when we were young, we could reject people. We could reject if we want to be with that crowd or not be with that crowd. But in the Lord, you cannot reject people. If Messiah accepts them, you can't say anything. Not, you could, you know, if you had your way, if we all had our way, and we're saying, okay, who should come in the door, who should come in the door, you might be a different congregation. But you don't have your way. I don't have my way. I, do, I wouldn't want it. It's Messiah's choice. You cannot reject any disciple Messiah chooses. You can say, stay away from me, but you can't. <laughs> but, I mean, I remember there was a birthday parties, you know, we had birthday parties, and we had to choose to, who to invite. You know, and I remember one, well, I, f I forgot to invite this one kid, and he was crying and crying. I got a call from the parent. We got a call from the parents. He got in, so we invited him, and he came and all that. But now it's Messiah's celebration. We can't do that. We cannot do that. Verse 10. And it happened as he was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax gatherers and sinners came and were dining with Yeshua, Jesus, and his disciples. Hmm. Sounds like a little bit of just what happened. Other Gospels reveal where this is. Matthew doesn't. Interesting. In the other Gospels, it reveals it was Matthew's house. Matthew doesn't put it in. He was with... He not only called him... He said, I want to go to your house. Now, isn't that like him? He did that with Zacchaeus, the other tax collector. He said, I'm going to your house. Well, it makes a statement because everybody's saying, why are you doing this? And the whole point is, this is the grace of God. So he goes there, and Matthew holds a party. Matthew invites his friends. He invites, who are those tax gatherers? It's his friends. Who are the sinners? His friends. Now, they're all sinners, but this is what it's saying is these people were really sinners. They, all, they knew these people to be like underworld people. 
dining. All these people could have been prostitutes, could have been uh, uh, people who, who uh, extorted, all sorts of things going on. And they're all at the dinner table, and there is Messiah with them. Mm. You know, when you come to the Lord, you can't hang out like you did. You can't hang out in the same way. You, you know, there's got to be a change that happens. That doesn't mean you reject the people who are your friends. You want to reach out to them. You want to reach out to them if you can. But you have a new life, too. But here, it's a good thing Matthew wants all his friends to see the new life. So he invites all these people, says, come, Messiah's here. And they come. This must have been this great evangelical event to be at this house. I mean, it must have been the first great evangelical thing that, that they're all the worst people and they're there with him. He's the honored guest. We're happy to bless you. He wants to bless his rabbi. So it's a party for a Messiah at Matthew's house. You know, we throw parties. We should throw him celebrations. We should just celebrate him. If you're going to celebrate, celebrate him. Because if there's anything worth celebrating, it's him. Everything else goes. He doesn't. So you want to celebrate something that is forever, celebrate him. Bring him into all your joys. This is good what Matthew's doing. Bring him into all your joys. Celebrate. When you eat, when you fellowship. I knew someone who, who said, I sat down with the Lord. I had a, 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 a dinner with the Lord. It was just like prepared a whole dinner, me and the Lord. Five course meal with the Lord. It was beautiful. It was just me and the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA.